bored, you sat in the security office above the atrium. It was your favorite place to be. From here you saw the most, and you had access to all security cameras of the Pizzaplex, with just the admin login which you had snagged, meaning you brought it off day shift leader Brian by buying him a drink. The reason on admins needed to go to all the different computers for the security cameras was so that they did their patrols automatically by just simply going to their other offices. But by simply logging into set PCs with the admin codes, it seemed as if you did, while sitting in your chair without having to get up. You filled your plastic cup with fizzy fizz fresh from the can, leaning back and taking a sip. You laugh, pretending that this cheap soda, that might as well be dishwasher water, was some bougie coffee that was more expensive than your car. Pursing your lips and taking very small sips of it. Was it said that your car probably was cheaper than said bougie coffee? Well, no time to think of that. You had a job to do. Placing the cup on the desk, you opened up the admin console. Switching through the camera slowly. This was the only part of your job you took serious. Watching the cams. You had played the games of the unnamed conspiracy developer and you loved pretending like you were in actual danger. Though in turn this led to you deeply analyzing every screen, every movement. So in a way, video games made you better at your job, who knew? Yawning, you switch to the cameras of the daycare, only to be met with a thick layer of smoke. Your fingers twitched. It was a kernel reaction, though of course you knew what actually was happening in the daycare. Still, your brain first thought of fire. It happened two weeks ago when the pet cockroaches of a birthday child managed to escape the kid's grasp. Of course, this led to a very unentertaining workday for the day shift. Luckily, the roaches named Billy and Kit had been discovered under a gacha ball machine. The problem, sometime later, cockroaches started appearing in the daycare. Exterminators had been called, and since then the daycare had been closed. All vents sealed, Likely no cockroaches have been discovered anywhere else in the plex. And so the daycare was put under smoke. Of course it was normal, things like this happened, but... Man, a child with pet hissing cockroaches. Ugh. You didn't want to be the security guard on shift that day. But... There was one thing that remained relatively forgotten, and that was the deck attendant. The animatronic had been sitting patiently inside the ball pits. His knees pulled up to his chin. For him, the time spent in the gas was both terrible yet beautiful, and boring all the same. He was without his friends, as of course no one was allowed inside. But also those disgusting bugs would be purged, and he could spend this time cleaning up, but cleaning up only took so long. There were still long periods of time where he just sat there, his internal programming telling him to go find someone to entertain, or else feel crushing boredom. Sun looked up at the ceiling. He couldn't see the light bulbs anymore, instead the smoke just seemed to glow there. The machine was kept inside the daycare, both by his primary programming, but also one of the daycare t guards told him there is a chance the bugs were inside him too. And so he definitely wanted to bathe in all of the delicious poison. And yet, he sighed. He was just so bored. His hands taking hold of a ball, lazily throwing it, causing it to ricochet over a wall out of the ball pit. And he hummed happily, knowing he had something to clean up. So, he got on his feet, stretched, before wandering out of the ball pit towards the front ball. He got a brilliant idea. 
As the animatronic bowed down to pick up the ball, he pulled back his leg and kicked it, just as the tips of his fingers touched the rogue plastic. Oopsie, he giggled, before running after the ball. Oh dear, he sighed in freak exasperation. And then he did it again. Oh, excuse me, clumsy little me today, oops. It was then that he eventually stopped at the big wooden daycare door. Looking around, he tapped his chin. Would it really be so bad if... With a shaking hand, he picked up the ball, his focus shifting from the ball to the door. It wasn't locked, just had all of its openings stuffed with cloth. Quickly, the machine opened the door just far enough for him to stretch out his arm, turned his hand, and dropped the ball outside with a loud tuck. He then closed it, crossed his arms, and said out loud, Oh dear, oh dear, I can't have a wallpit with a missing ball now, can we? <laughs> Snickering, he then stole himself into the outside, making sure to keep the ball at just the right distance, at least until... You are sitting on your office chair. I pulled the switch that kept the set chair in place to not do that. So now you're whipping back and forth on it in the rhythm of your shuffle song selection on your phone. It were the little things. When suddenly, with just enough force to decapitate a happy tree friend's character, a plastic ball was thrown at your face. With the sudden slap, you're thrown off the chair, falling on your left side with a loud thud. What the fuck? You shouted. Language! You heard a metallic voice. Pouting, you sat up, staring over the chairs, seating towards... Sun. He was standing at the open door, with his hands on his hips. May I remind you? You're the one who hit me. I... I'm completely in the right with cursing. Awkwardly, the robot tapped his fingers together. Zoe. You rubbed your cheek. It hurt. Right. Sighing, you proceeded to sit back down on the office chair. What are you doing here anyway? You asked while turning on the mirror cam on your phone to watch for bruises. I was so bored. The robot fell forward on his knees. These stinking bugs, I hate them! They keep my friends away! I miss my friends! Uh-huh. Was your only response, as you pursed your lips, pushing them sideways. Not even fully listening. Your cheek looked fine, maybe a little red. Perhaps the reason it hurt so much was the shock. Turning it off, you put it back on the table. Spinning in the chair until your eyes fell on the machine. And what do I have to do with that? Well, you are the only person in the pizza plex. Ergo, the only person I can entertain. For your own amusement? He blinked. Isn't that selfish? The robot gasped cartoonishly and took a step back as he smirked. Ah, oh, you love messing with them. I am not programmed to be selfish. Chuckling, you exhaled. Oh, so you want to entertain me. Hmm. But I have a job to do, you know. Scared, the robot looked left and right. Uh, 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 uh. He was still hoping to entertain you. After about a minute of letting him squirm, you sighed. <sighs> Just be truthful. Doesn't like your data have a way to communicate with adults? The robot looked you up and down. Statistically speaking, you aren't the size of an adult. I I'm five foot two! That's a perfectly okay height! And short girls are more desired by guys! 
You cross your arms, pouting even harder. So cute. What was that? The robot approached you, stepping behind you. I'm sorry, Miss Nightguard. I really am. He placed his long, heavy hands on your shoulders, making you squeak like a dog toy. But, according to medical news today, the average height of women over the last 10 years has increased to 5 foot 5 inches, from the previous 5 foot 4 inches. So by definition, don't say it, please. You are small. Please stop mocking me. His fingers began tapping your shoulders, in a mix of mild mockery as well as to soothe you. I am not mocking you, Miss Nightguard. I am stating educational facts. I am certain you can apply this knowledge in the future. You blinked. He was getting too handsy. And annoying. But primarily handsy. And what about this? You pointed at his hands. Oh! He stepped away, his hands raised defensively. I haven't felt human touch in so long, so long, I need to apologize. Was this an uh, uncon non consensual touching? Wait, so you're built to desire human touch? You spun around to look at him. He had his hands raised as he took a step back further. You stood up, crossing your arms, looking away in thought for a moment. Will you stop bugging me if I let you cuddle with me? Oh, do I? You're dead, Pant. Almost expecting him to say no. Either due to the awkwardness or because you meant it as a joke. At least to you it was clearly a joke. Thing is, if you pulled out now, more than likely he'd keep bugging you. And no, you really didn't want that. Come to think of it, it was part of your job to entertain the machines, wasn't it? Some guards even played with them. Sighing, you grabbed your security tablet. Fine. Fine. Just... Fine. The machine sat down on the ground, with his ball in hand. You rolled your eyes, forcing yourself to sit between his legs. As you look through the security cameras, you know, doing your job, you could feel one of his hands on your hip, while the other played with the ball. It was quite uncomfortable, as the animatronic was built out of hard plastic and metal, with his softest parts being his pants. Though, thanks to his programming, he took great care not pinching or squeezing you with his metal bits. Meanwhile, you skip through the cameras, pretending to be busy while trying not to get flustered. It was difficult not to feel weirded out why the animatronic tenderly touched you. Sure, nothing was overtly lewd, and maybe if you had been a child, it would be soothing as well. But considering the fact that when he gently started massaging your shoulders, your heartbeat increased. You could definitely feel yourself be calmer, but at the same time, it has been so long since someone touched you like this. Too long. And you are getting really into it. Why were you thinking like this? You were on the clock. He was a child entertainment animatronic. Not some adult plaything. Then again, he technically was a thing. You rolled your eyes, giving in. You inhaled through your mouth before turning to face him. What's wrong, Miss Nightguard? You put a hand on his chest, looked away. You could just turn away again and keep working, but no, you had no self control when it came to these things. You really are needy, you know? His son spikes wiggled happily. I apologize, Miss Nightguard. He raised a finger like a teacher about to explain something important. See, imagine.
imagine my need for attention like a long glass tube that has a tiny hole at the bottom. The attention you're giving me is like water being filled into it. When there's water in the tube, my program makes me feel happy and useful, which is the preferred state. However... He let his shoulders hang and the back of his head hit the wall of a quiet thought. When no one plays with me, the glass empties, and when it is dry, I have the desire to seek people out to fill it again. What happens when the glass is full? He asked cautiously. Oh, that means peak happiness and productivity for me. It even gives me more patience. It's the reward for children when they're on good behavior. He sounded way too proud of that. I see. You fought for a moment. So how does this work? Uh, pardon? Is it just interacting? Is it touching? What is it? He clapped his hands excitedly. Oh, Miss Nightguard, you never showed so much interest in me. Uh, well, I suppose the more happiness I'm surrounded with, the more water goes in the glass. You grin. Is that so? Hmm... How is it now? I suppose it's just a little trickle because we're alone. He blinked, his white eyes staring at you. It was just a hypothetical. Just one person was completely enough to satisfy his need to make people smile. I don't quite follow. With a cheeky smile, you begin unbuttoning your shirt. See, son, I have here a two big round buttons that make me really happy when they're being played with. Smirking, you put the shirt on the ground. Oh, Miss Nightguard, you aren't allowed to undress. That is called loot behavior. You put a finger on his mouth. I didn't say you want to make me happy. He shrugged uncomfortably. Now, what I am about to ask you to do, you will only do with me. Got it? And only when I ask you to. No one else. Noted. No. He huffed uncomfortably. Noted isn't enough. Miss Nightguard. I don't know if I like this game. Placing both hands on his shoulders, he whispered, Open my bra. Son's hands were shaking as his fingers took hold of the strings. That's right. Good boy. Good boy. You purred. And as you leaned back a minute later, you hummed. Hmm. And as you leaned back a minute later, he asked. Uh, what about those buttons? Uh, did you say you wanted me to play with Miss Nightguard? Thank you for watching my video until the very end. And I would like to remind you to please like and subscribe and comment something down below. I read every comment you write to me and I try to re reply to them as often as I can. But before we say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely darling stewards who so graciously support my third tier membership. Husky HD 17, Hopeful, Castea Misery, Brie, Zoe, Ikea, Mystic Jade 111, Annabelle R. Contreras, Giovanni Moriarty, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Bitbit, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you so much for your continued support. And finally, I'd like to thank all of my lovely darling mates for also supporting me financially. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and please remember to like and subscribe.